more than one plant strand. I want to get to see here. I've uh, been a license agent here in Birmingham since 2007. And I, uh, I got in the business uh, investing in real estate. And that's kind of where I, uh, I started with buying properties and flipping them. We started buying some, uh, some cash flowing uh, properties. So uh, that's what we're going to be talking a little bit about today. Not, in, not the investing, but your, your exit strategy. How many people in here really had started beginning with the end in mind? The whole root, you know. <laughs> Who knows what that means? What, what do you hear when you say that? And I'm an interactive, so I need some energy. Don't just, we ain't gonna just look, and, look at each other today. So tell me what that means when you think beginning with the end in mind. What does that mean? Retirement. All right, retirement. What else? Eating COVID. <laughs> <Who said that? laughs> uh, correct. So what I'm talking about today is set up a secure financial future, okay? And, and so it's talking about, when I think about beginning with the end in mind, it's seeing yourself in the place where you desire to be today. It's allowing you to be able to be present uh, with a future goal today. And how do you work towards that is the decisions and the actions that you're taking each day so that it's measuring up to that goal where you're going to be in the future, okay? So I want, to, I want you to think, I'm going to ask you a few questions and I want some interactions, okay? So I want to, I want to ask you, are you thinking entrepreneur or are you thinking transactions as a real estate person? Okay, so tell me then, if you're thinking entrepreneur, how many of you have a meeting with your accountant and you're reviewing your P&L on a monthly basis? How many of you are, and it's good, I know this is like everybody, but I, I just want to give you some tips and we're going to get into some action steps, but so many of us, I believe, as real estate professionals, we're thinking as agents. So how many real estate agents do we have in the room? How many? I don't think so. I just think we have a lot of entrepreneurs with, with uh, real estate license. Okay, I want you to renew your mind. It's all in thinking. Okay, how you think is how you will act. Just like Gustav said, when you change from a goal, a goal, you can hit it, you can miss it, it's okay. But when you're committed, it has to happen by any means necessary. It's just not about we can do it or we can't. It's about being committed. So when you're thinking about from a point of entrepreneur, I want to write down another thing. Uh, when you're, when you're do you have a defense in place? Do you have defense in place or are you only playing offense? And I'm gonna walk in some of this stuff. I just want to give you some questions to think. So when I'm saying are you only playing defense, I mean are you only playing offense, what does that mean to you if you hear that question? So we're thinking how much I have to close, right? How much, how many sales I have to have? How many closes do I need to have, right? So how much uh, disability insurance do you have if you got hit by a car or if you got sick and went down? Any of you have disability insurance, and I'm not trying to give a damper, I want you to think of things, how often do you review because your income is increasing that you cover that disability if something's happened to you? So many of us are the primary breadwinners in our home, so I want you to think about that. I want you to think of how much, uh, how much do you need to retire on if you had to leave out of this business in 10 years? How much income do you really need and how do how and that's what we're going to talk about today how do you get to that place where in the next five years that if you want to walk away from this business and not do real estate again do you have in place a plan in place to be able to do that as an entrepreneur because a business owner can walk away or not be present like Gustin runs a business if you're transactional you're self-employed and you always have to be present you're not running a true business guess what team Zillow is running a business. They're looking at us as a business. We're still playing transactions, but a lot of these eye buyers and Zillow and these companies are wanting to take us out of this business so, because we're thinking so transactional, okay? So I want to renew your mind today. I want you to leave here with a plan of an entrepreneur. So let's talk about how does this work, okay? So, got my notes here. You know I don't like to have these notes and stuff, so and I like to move a little bit. But I want to give you a few things. So let's talk about how do you start setting up the strategy and plan for exiting for the, the next five years. And that was my next question I wanted to ask. Today, where you are and, and who you are today is a reflection of the things that you've been doing, the people you've been hanging around, and what have you been doing for the past five years? And so I had to ask myself this question because what I was doing and how did I even end up at EXP, we were so focused on transactions and selling. And I wasn't focused on really like exiting this business and how do I do this? And so that's what we became about thinking, okay, how do we begin to place ourselves in a, in a situation to have equity, to have ownership, to have residuals, 
to have a place that we can exit. Because listen, guys, if the money is not making money for you or there's some type of equity situation that's paying you a dividend, you will be the one continuing to work every day for the money. OK, so um, let's talk about how we back it up. So exit strategy number one. We all know about the uh, the amount of sales we need to have each and every year, right? So you, you know how to get to that point of converting up your money. But let's talk about the things that we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis for our business. How often are you reviewing your lead sources and where the most of your business is coming from and what's no longer working? Let's let's remove the things that are not working from our business. So let's let me give an example. I'm getting a lot of leads from a lead source, but I'm not closing the business. But I'm getting 50 to 100 leads a month, but I hadn't closed one of those deals in the past nine months. How many of us have ever had that issue before with leads? Or, or I'm working my database, but I hadn't closed anything from my database, but yet I'm not calling my database, I'm not working my database, but I got a database, but I'm not closing anything from my database. Does that make sense? It makes sense. So what, so what I want you to do, the first thing to do, let's talk about removing the things that are not working from our lives, whether that be database leads and those things. But one of the things we did this year is we removed a lot of lead sources that are not working for us, okay? Because you got to stop the bleeding first before we can start talking about adding income and ex exiting your future business. So stop the things that are not working in your life. Stop the things like hanging with the wrong people. Okay? And, and I'm not saying the wrong people about bad stuff. I'm saying about if you're not hanging around people who have the same mindset of exiting like you, get them around that crowd. Okay? My next question I have here on the sixth on this list here is uh, times have changed, but have you? And I'm asking that question because times have changed. And what I mean by times have changed, the things that we're doing as real estate agents right now is not the same things we did in 2007. And I'll give you an example. So back in 2007, we were out, we were so focused on who could give me the best split, right? Is that right? We were focused on uh, who can give you the cheapest office fees, okay? And so what we want to focus on now is who can help me retire the fastest? Who can help me gain and increase income? And this is not a pinch or anything for ESP. I'm just talking about anything you're doing for, for your business as an entrepreneur, okay? So I want to ask, have you changed with the times? Uh, have you thought of expanding instead of currently staying where you are and what you're doing today? Have you thought about expanding to other markets and how can you do that without increasing costs of your own pocket from having to buy another building or sign a new lease or anything like that has anybody ever thought about expanding outside of just your current market of Birmingham <laughs> I should have known that's how you get to a thousand huh? <laughs> so and, and the reason I said I wanted to ask these questions because now I want to talk to you about how do we put this plan in place and how do we start moving forward with these things so uh, so again, we was talking in the beginning before I jumped ahead about c controlling our costs. So the first thing that you're doing is removing your variable costs, and those are the things that you're doing transactional wise. And the fixed costs is what we've changed as far as moving over to the current company we are with. And so that allows us now to have a higher split per transaction, which gives us increase of cash flow. So currently, what we were, we were paying 36% per transaction every time we close. That's a cost of sale. So one of the first things we did, and this is about two years ago, to control that cost, we changed with a different model and plan. So that increased us to giving us 16% of our monthly income. So who can do the quick math on 16% of a 5,000, uh, 5, on average, our commission check is about $4,500. But to make numbers easy, just say five grand. So instantly that gave us a cash flow increase. Okay, we're thinking like business owners, not transactional. That gave us a, an instant increase in cash flow. We were able to take that increase in cash flow and reinvest that money into the transactions, into the, the lead sources that generated us the best income after we cut all the mess out first. So again, remember, you go in and you want to remove, and I'm trying to cut this into a 20-minute conversation. This is an hour and a half conversation. But just for a quick sake, you want to go in and cut, cut the mess and then change the cash flow and how are you using the current money you have right now reinvest that money so now we can start compounding the income we're receiving from that and now you begin to have growth okay now once you're taking the growth and i think rob is here he's going to talk to you about you have to understand the amount of money a you have to live on as a as an agent and i know so many of us know this 
But everybody here, if you start out as a, a real estate agent, say how much you want to make a year. What do you think the magic number for a new agent is? $100,000. But then I find out you really only need $3,000 a month to live on, for real. So what I want you to do is know that number first. So let's know we need $3,000, $4,000 a month. And then what we do is we have an account set up that all of our deposits come into. So we're just talking about setting up your financial future. So all of our deposits come into one account and you put yourself on a payroll. And I'm not giving any financial advice. I'm not an advisor. I'm not a lawyer or an accountant. So I want to get at this, get at, you know, a little note. But what you want to do is each time, every month that comes in, let's say we have 40000 coming to that deposit account every month. What we do from payroll, we'll take the amount of money we need to live on. Let's say that's $5,000, and $5,000 is transferred into our operating account, and we pay ourselves that. No matter how much we make each month, we live on that budget. That's our projected budget that we live on. And guess what we do with the surplus? What do you think we do with the surplus? Invest in what, though? Who's that? All of the above. So, but in order to have that, what Gus was saying earlier, you have to have clarity on first how much you need to have, how much can you cut out, and then what do you do with the money that you reinvest once you get that income. Now, we buy real estate. So we buy real estate, we reinvest in the business, but we also buy more stock currently in the company that we're with. And the cool thing about it, we're also able to buy a lot of the stock for discounted pricing. Because again, we're focusing on the exit strategy. Right now, I'm working my five-year plan today so that in the next five years, I won't walk away. But if we wanted to walk away, we're planning on being able to be in that position to do that, okay? So it's securing that financial future. And that's a hard thing to do in 20 minutes to go over, but I want you to be very clear. If you're not thinking about true strategy around how do I start placing myself in a position to walk away, and you have to control the day-to-day -day expenses and how you spend money on a day-to-day -day basis on your personal side. Even, and I know this is very minor, but even if you know, like, you swipe your card a lot, start using cash for everything you do. Go back to the cash system. This stuff is getting really serious about if you're gonna really, like, grow your business. So many agents you guys are spending to the amount of money that you can't, your checks are coming in. You have to start cutting that stuff off and get laser focused on what do you have to have each month coming in so that you can take that money and begin to reinvest and get yourself prepared for your financial future, okay? How am I doing on time? You got seven minutes. Perfect. So let's close this out with the next seven minutes. And I want to challenge to this. And again, I'm, I'm just saying I'm not going to give you an action step to do. Well, I will. So the first thing I want you to do, I want you to really sit down and use Mint. M-I-N-T is a free uh, software that you can use to track your spending for the next 30 days. And even for those who are anal like me, still go back and reevaluate what have I been spending my money on the most. The thing that's a variable that you spend variable money on, so let's talk about variable, fast food, uh, movie theaters, going out, whatever. Those are those var variable things. Take that money and take that out as cash in your pocket and spend off cash. On your purse, on your business side, go through your business account and find every single thing that you, oh, on the personal side too, that gives you every account that you're not using, like these old subscriptions, cut all that stuff off. I'm telling you, you would be amazed how much current money you will find in your checking account if you just go on and doing these small little things. And do the same with your business. All those old subscriptions that you signed up for, those old Realtor.com things and those old Zillow things that you're not calling and closing anymore, cut that mess off if it's not working, okay? And the way you find out if it's working, let's say you're paying $100 a month for Zillow, right, or Realtor.com, and you spent $1,200 for the year, and you've only made $1,200 for the year, cut that off if you don't know how to work it. You should at least be closing $3,600. It should be three times, at least three times what you spent on that investment. If you're not, you're breaking even, cut it off. The second part is once you go in and you evaluate what you, what you was no longer working, and then you start taking that money and reinvesting that money into the things that you've seen through where closings have happened from in this past year, okay? So the next step I want you to do is once you take the mint and cut that mess off and what the things that are not working, then you go through your current statement of your business. I want you then to commit for the next 30 days to work that current lead system like Gus was saying where you're prospecting and doing that for the next, for your next 30 days going into that, okay? So I just wanted to kind of, it's hard to give it in a 30 minute speed, I mean a 20 minute speed, because I got a whole ton of notes here, but I had to jump around a little bit to get to them. The main thing I want you to do really right now is to begin to plan for the next five years 
and to really get focused on running yourself as a business. Think, think about your P&L, think about profit of uh, your, your growth margins, think of expansion, that's what I have here. Think about expansion, think of growth, not just so much transactional. Uh, think about customer retention rate, think about your sales conversion rate, think about your value proposition. You have to start talking into that conversation. Uh, make sure you keep the score. Use, we use a system called Commitment to Excellence. It's called CTE, it's a tracker, it's about 30 bucks a month, and it allows you to keep score on all of your production, all of your upcoming transactions, and it'll allow you to really focus on what do you have to close each and every month. It's a phenomenal system, it's an Excel sheet, but uh, it's, it's worth the investment, and I want to challenge you, if you're closing for an example already, 12 million for next year, let's just give an example, if you're gonna close 12 million next year, how many of us already have a million dollars worth of business on the books for January right now? My man, there you go. And so the, the, the real question is, how much of the current goal, whatever you're gonna close annually next year, how much of that do you already have on the books for January? Because whatever you don't, know, like let's say if there's a million a month and you only have 500 pending, you really gotta focus on now, how do I continue to keep the score of making sure I'm keeping the gap closed on a monthly basis? And so we really focus always a lot on making sure we never get behind the gap because if you're not focusing and keeping clarity on the score each and every month, you're gonna play the game differently. So remember, I really want you to take your annual goal, divide that by 11, because you gotta have a month off. That's your pending goal for January, and that's what I would have you to focus on for January, for December now, to make that a goal to at least go out of December with already your January closing pending for, for the month. So I hope this was helpful. Again, I had to ramble because I got 20 minutes to get a lot of information, but Close out your 2020 greatly, and I, I, I thank y'all for your time.